Think, crawl while you're crosshairs and drift and hound. I know for sure. Get on. It will also Cade and Shane will get all onto the night chip while it's sort of parked, per se, in Chicago, and they get on and it's, as it starts taking off. And then uh, crosshairs climbs through somewhere in the middle. I don't know. I don't know where, but climbs up into somewhere and unplugs a little tiny thing. Unplugs it, which launches all the anchors and stops it from kicking off. So then lockdown can't go anywhere. In this time, they find Tessa, and, and just through this whole battle, or whatever kind of battle thing, the whole time on the ship, the only people that encountered, um, the only, the only out of all of this, only Cade and Shane encounter uh, all of Lockdown's minions type things, and they, they're the only ones, the only ones with problems. Hound and Crosshairs and Drift, I'll make it to find Optimus, no problem at all. It's kind of weird, kind of weird, but hey, I, I don't, I don't really know. I don't know why that that's just convenience I guess I, I, I guess it would be convenience uh, and they just want to show off Mark Wahlberg and Shane and Jack Rayner as they're battling with the sword gun thing um, this movie man was was it was good I gotta say it was it was good it was I don't I, like I think I said in in my uh, non-spoiler review that it, it doesn't beat Transformers one the first Transformers live action movie but I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe. I, I, I'm kind of getting it to uh, close. It, it's, it's, it's probably like a half a point off of beating it. So, whatever. Anyway, going on to the Dinobots. The Dinobots were captured and, and um, what's the? Well, anyway, they were in Lockdown's night ship. Uh, and oh, going on from that, after they release Optimus Prime. And, and then the humans get back to their towards them. They take that section of the ship and they just go away. Just before lockdown gets all the stuff unhooked and launches straight the cyber like hyperspace and whatever way out as they're getting off and they and they go and whatever and go to somewhere I don't know where. But in this, as they get away, um, the uh, Optimus, uh, what was it anyway? They go and they. Go to Hong Kong because I know that um, that's where the the seed is going, and then they also know that Galvatron is going there. So because of that, Cade calls Joshua and tells him about that, and then and then Joshua was like, "Why should I trust you?" And he's like, "Well, I have some sources, let's say." So because he has um, brains, that's them. He has brains with him because he they helped him escape anyway. So through that. Um, God damn it, fly. Anyway, through that, um, they, they tell him, and then Joshua tells him to keep it apart. But as that's happened, as he's telling them to keep them apart, and he's pushing up Hale Attinger and, um, damn it, what's his name? Anyway, the, 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 the operative, or whatever, the black ops soldier, I guess you could say, as he's pushing them out of his office into a, to get into cars and leave, um, Galvatron is already taken over. And almost got this. So anyway, so they leave with the seed. Joshua and leaving Bing, and, and whatever her character's name is, and uh, that other, that white blonde chick that works with him, uh, they all leave out of here, and they're gone. They're they're driving away. But, but Stinger is close behind, and so they get away. They actually end up getting away, and then um, the other problem is now the CSI is looking for them. So that they get away from them, they get away from the CSI, and they're getting on to the last ship, getting onto the ship with the Autobots, both Joshua and uh, Leaving Bing. I don't know her name. I still don't know her name, their character, the character's name. I don't know that. Anyway, so they're getting onto the ship, and then they fl they go to as they're getting on, they get onto the ramp of the ship, and then they get shot by um, was I afraid of it was Galvatron or, or Stinger? Anyway, they get hit by rockets, and then the, they fall out. All the, all the humans fall out, and so do uh, Hound and Bumblebee. They fall out, and um, so they're left to fight for themselves. As the ship or the ship goes in, into um, it, down into the geological park, where Optimus um, gets a sword, the the sword, the sword of judgment, and he finds like conveniently, right instantly finds 
all of the Dinobots and releases them to, and then they all they all walk out not in Dino form. They walk out in robot mode, and then so Optimus starts fighting Grimlock. Then what? As Grimlock transforms into into Dino mode, he runs at Optimus. Optimus smacks him once, once. And then knocks him over, and he's like, oh, whatever. And then Optimus comes up and puts the sword against his face, and then that's done. That's it. And all of them are like, okay, whatever. Because they don't care, obviously. They just follow what Grimlock does. So, anyway, they, they transform into their modes, and then Crosshairs rides uh, Scorn, and then Drift rides Slug. Like it's... So, uh, Optimus on Grimlock, Drift on Slug, and uh, Crosshairs on Scorn. And then there's Strafe in the background who flies with the, behind them. Anyway, and then... Uh, oh, and Slash isn't in the movie. Slash is not in the movie. He's a toy. He was released as if he was going to be in the movie, but he's not. So that's kind of disappointing. But then again, he's not. it's not. Because I don't know what Slash would do. He's supposed to be like a Velociraptor. Which is a smaller dinosaur, man. A Velociraptor is supposed to be like shin height on, a, on an average male. Or an average, an average si height of a human. An average male, I guess, would be what they'd measured off of. But he's supposed to be knee height. So how in the hell would that work? Like, uh, uh, it's knee height on Optimus Prime or knee height on Bumblebee? Because Bumblebee's short. Uh, I don't know how that would work. And how he would be any bit useful. Because he'd be the size of a human. Or, or a little bit taller than a human. Which a human could ride him. A human could ride him like an ostrich. He kind of the size of an ostrich, I guess. Or maybe a little bit bigger. But still, it's, uh, that he'd kind of be useless if he was in the movie. But um, Optimus frees the Dinobots, like I said, uh, and it's it's kind of the stupidest way. I thought, because they're in a geological park where there's all these um, Chinese dragon stuff, that they'd like, release them from within the Earth, and they'd be there. They've been there for however long, and they'd just get released from the Earth and whatever, and, you know... That's how they do it, but no, they were captured. They're captured, captures of lockdown, which is weird. But um, and then when they they go fight off all the all the human human made con like uh, Dinobots, uh, human made Decepticons, or human made uh, Transformers, which I I'm just gonna call Vehicons, including Megatron or Galvatron and Stinger. So they're there. And Stinger, Stinger, in this movie, is next to useless. Next to useless. You think being such an expensive car and um, and being, like, advertised, I guess, so to speak, through the movie, as, like, at the beginning of the movie, um, he's, like, with Bumblebee and, like, the statue of him next to Bumblebee and Bumblebee's all fighting it and kicking it and pushing it and going, I'm no, and whatever, I'm not old, I'm not whatever, and, I'll, and then knocks it over. And all that. It, it, it's, he's not. He's not. Um, uh, what what am I trying to say? He's not. Any but you think he'd be more useful through the movie, but he's not. Um, it, it it you don't you I don't even I don't even want to I don't even know about about Stinger. He was he was a waste of a character. He doesn't say anything. Barely even battles Bumblebee. Even though you'd think like since Bumblebee's all jealous of him because of being new and whatever, that he. would be like Bumblebee's man-made nemesis, like how Galvatron's Optimus is nemesis, such as being Megatron, whatever before. But no, it's it's weird. I don't know why. You like you'd think anyway. It's weird. Um, and, but my favorite line that Bumblebee says, so 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 to speak, says because he uses radio, whatever, or TV, something. Uh, the favorite line that he says in the movie is after he, like, whatever, kills Stinger off, or whatever, I hate cheap knockoffs. Because, one, it's made in China. <laughs> so, you know, like, Dollarama sort of stuff, made in China, cheap, breaks easy. Um, but it, it, it's, it's kind of fun. It's, it's, it's a funny movie. It's a funny moment, but through the movie... I, there were so many moments in there that I noticed that I was the only one laughing because of the how dry the comedy was and I just find everything funny but it, it, it was it was honestly funny to me and if you guys uh, pay more attention and look deeper into the into the uh, into the joke you might find it funny but uh, I, I was the only one laughing 
I felt kind of weird, but hey, who cares? Um, man, I, I, yeah, I think that's pretty much the end of this. 20 minutes, man. 20 minutes. I'm gonna cut it up into pieces. Uh, part, probably three parts or, or four parts. I don't know. No, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two parts. Two parts sounds good. Anyway, hope you guys all enjoyed. Don't forget to like and share the video. It does help the channel grow, and I'll see you all later. Peace out.